In this video, I wanted to show you some of the advanced tools for drawing in Adobe Animate. In a previous video, I talked about the Fluid Brush Tool and the Classic Brush Tool. And I want to talk about this Rectangle Tool and what's underneath it, the Rectangle Primitive Tool, as well as the Oval Tool and the Oval Primitive Tool. There's also this uh, Polystar Tool, which I will uh, talk about as well. So if you choose the Rectangle Tool, and you start just kind of dragging out in your stage or on your scene, you'll notice that what it's doing is it's picking up the fill color and the color for the stroke or the line. So the blue, it should be a, a, an outline in blue, and then the fill color it would be green. So you'll notice that it's stroke and fill. I'm just going to move to the selection tool, and I'm going to make this a little easier. Edit my tools, and I'm just going to drag this out, and this should be the sub-selection selection tool. And I'm actually going to pull this rectangle. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to pull this out. There we go. Right. So, uh, and actually, I'm going to move this one over here. I'm just sort of making the toolbox so I can kind of get to these things pretty quickly. This is a nice little way to edit the toolbox and add all the, any tools that you want or move them around. So, these are sort of the construction tools or drawing tools, right? And so, I have a rectangle tool and I just used. Uh, and I'm going to select that. I'm going to double click. If I select it once, I'm just grabbing the fill. You can kind of see the object is selected as fill. If I double select it, I'm going to have a, a fill and a stroke. And so I'm going to change the stroke size so you can kind of see this a little bit better. All right, so you got a stroke around it. Now I can just delete that. I can actually select it or double click it and delete it if I wanted to, right? Or I can leave it or I can just select once in the, the fill and delete that. So they're separate objects, but they're combined with the rectangle tool. You can take the sub-selection tool and you can actually grab the points and you can kind of move them around. You can even hold down Option and then drag out um, Bezier handles to kind of reshape it. So this is one great way to use that tool to make different shapes. I can start with a rectangle and if I want, I can make some other interesting shape out of that just by turning these corner points these are corner points, these are curve, curve points. I can kind of just make them whatever I need to, right? Just kind of shape it. And I can make keep that one a corner if I want, and these curve points, right? So that's the basic rundown of how I use the rectangle tool. And if you don't want the stroke or the fill when you're using the tool, you can just turn it off like that. And then when you draw out a rectangle, it's only going to be the fill because uh, I turned off the stroke. The other one I wanted to show you, and I'm going to kind of just clear this out really quick is this rectangle primitive tool. You can't edit it via points very easily, but what you can do is you can make it a rectangle and if you drag these points out, you're gonna see these points. If I grab it from the corner and pull it in, you're gonna see it makes it rounded, right? It still keeps, like this is where it originally was, and you can look down here and when you get the object open in the properties panel, you're gonna see that at 56 pixels is the rounded corners. If you switch that to this one, so this right here, this button right here, uh, sets the same roundness for each. On this one, you can set a different roundness and you can just kind of enter it by number, right? So I can make one rounded versus the other one. So it actually is very visual, like this is this corner, this is this corner, right? And then these are different. And so then I can still manipulate those independently, right? I can make this one a little bit higher, this one a little bit less, right? So I can make different shapes that way. That's, that's kind of how that works. The interesting thing about this is you can't add new points along that. Uh, so that's pretty much how this uh, tool works. The next one is the oval tool. So I can drag around the oval tool. If you hold down the shift key, it'll constrain it to the same height and width. If I don't hold down the shift key, it allows me to make it an oval, not a circle that's the same width to height. And again, uh, I can switch to points, and I have points here that I can manipulate. I can even delete them, right? So I can kind of manipulate that. So sometimes I start with these sort of basic shapes and then start manipulating them as I go along, right? And again, the same thing. I can select that. I can double-click it, and I can change the stroke color if I wanted. I can change the stroke size, right? And I can even eliminate that. I can even make, you know, give the, the stroke some transparency. So when I select that, move it over, what I could do is, you know, have that come up and put that over another object 
and you'll see the transparency. So just like the oval tool, the, the uh, it has an oval primitive tool. So like just like the rectangle, you have a rectangle tool and rectangle primitive. You have an oval, oval primitive. And so I'm going to drag that oval out. And actually, I'm going to change that back so that I don't have. So it's 100%, right? And then I drag it out. And if I, again, I can hold down shift and it'll constrain it, right? Or I can just, I can do an oval if I wanted to. And what the, this primitive tool allows you to do when you go to the selection, right? Uh, I can't drag it out. out in, when I go to the selection tool, I can select the oval and you'll see this little point when I drag it, it starts to make it, you know, like a pizza or a pie cut out, right? So you can do the sweep of that uh, angle. And the same thing here, you can grab this and, and open this up a little bit, right? I can also drag this out and make an, in, an interior uh, to this sweep, right? So if I make one that's, I've already set those settings, so it did that, right? So when I held down shift to constrain it, but you have these options down here, when you look at the object in the oval primitive, you can actually see that you have you have a style for the line, you have a width for the line, right? You can change its kind of contour to make it look like, like it's more sketched, right? Drawn out, that's the width, and you can change your own profile, right? You have a lot of other settings, but down here at the bottom, you have the start angle, which is sort of the, if you want to do it visually, you can pull it down from here, right? Oh, that one, Let's see if I can grab it, there we go, right? That's the start angle. And then you have the end angle, which is the other side, right? And so I can grab it there, whoop, there. And then you have this inner radius, which is this. That's the inner radius. Whoop, there we go. Right, you can see that inner radius. It also has this closed path, so you can kind of make sure it's closed and it has a fill. If it's not turned on, you see the fill goes away. So I can change the style of the line, right? And the same thing with my rectangle primitive. Uh, I can change the style of that. Again, I can change the, the angles, and you can actually see down here the rectangle options, but I can change the style of the line to say something like this, and I can change the width of that line. The weird thing is on this width, it usually only works with a solid line, right? I can taper it, but if I want to do one of these kind of uh, interesting styles for the, for the stroke, it, it won't let me change the width because it's just not designed that particular line style is not does not have that right so if i want to change that i have to go to more of a solid line and then i can change the uh the taper so the thing to kind of understand about this is say this one this is the start of the line this is the end of the line so when it starts here it goes around and this is where it ends so it's got to start and an end and this is just across the entire length of the stroke right so however big your object however big or small it is that's what you're going to see from start to end. That's kind of the profile of the entire line. Uh, and so that's basically it. Those are those, those tools. The, uh, the other one is the Polystar tool, which has kind of the same capabilities. Like you can make this, move it around, grab it, move it around. Whoop. I don't want to separate it. I'm going to move it around here. Notice that when it overlapped this, it cut it out. But it has some of these same capabilities. A couple things to think about when you've got that uh, object, or I'm going to go back to the tool, right? You can see that the style says polygon, and I can go to star if I want to, you know, draw out a star, I can draw out a star. I typically don't use these too much, but you can kind of number, you know, uh, assign it however many number of sides you want, star point, size. Um, I typically don't do that because I usually start with a simple shape and just kind of make my own designs. If I really wanted a star, I could start from this, or if I wanted just a polygon, I could start from that. And I could give it, you know, if I wanted eight sides, I can give it eight sides and then draw it out. And then I've got a, an eight sided, like a stop sign. Uh, but again, same width, style, some of the same capabilities. It's a little bit sim more simple of a tool. But again, it, it also goes back, it doesn't have a primitive option like the rectangle or the circle, but you still have points that you can manipulate. So you can start with a shape and then modify it as you move along. And those are those tools. Hopefully that helps and uh, good luck with it.